What is going on my awesome fellow sound designers of YouTube today? Well first, my name is Shane Gregoire, I'm from Rocket Powered Sound, CEO and everything, but today we are going to be getting into how to make this awesome FM bass in Serum, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, really cool sound here. Um, I was just going through my previously made serum patches and I came across this. So I figured it was pretty cool. So I, I wanted to make it uh, make a tutorial for you guys and actually give this bass out as usual. So if you guys like that sound and you think it's a pretty cool sound, make sure you guys consider subscribing if you're new here because basically we're putting out awesome tutorials like this every single week. And you know, they're just really awesome. Most of the time we're doing sound design recreations, but if you're already a subscriber, I'm sorry I went through that whole spiel because you already know what's up, you already know we got the best tutorials. So I'm sorry, we'll just move right into the tutorial. So let's go ahead and start off. We're actually gonna be leaving oscillator A on our initialized sawtooth waveform. And if you guys already watched my videos, you'd already know that this isn't a sawtooth. It's not a real sawtooth. It's basically just a reversed sawtooth waveform that is uh, flipped around and or flipped at a 50% face. So our basic, our normal sawtooth will look like this. See quite the difference, um, but it is just very similar to, you know, our standard sawtooth. So anyways, let's go ahead and turn up the Actually, we'll leave the voices for once we start to get into the FM. But as I previously said, this is a FM type bass here. So obviously we're gonna turn on our frequency modulation from oscillator B. So we turn it up. Obviously we're not getting any uh, signal. So that's why we need to turn on our signal oscillator, which is gonna be oscillator B. Since oscillator B is gonna be the signal and oscillator A is gonna be the host, we're gonna be intercepting these frequencies from oscillator B. That means that we get to turn off the level of oscillator B, not turn off oscillator B, just turn down the level. And that way the oscillator is still active, it's just not outputting any sound. The sound will be, um, the sound will be uh, entered through the frequency modulation of oscillator A and we'll be outputting it through there. So now let's try turning up the FM. So we get that classic frequency modulation sound. Um, not Nothing too crazy here. Uh, first things first, we're actually going to turn our random phase all the way down to zero. And that's gonna make more sense once we turn up the unison to two. So now we have two voices running on both of these oscillators. When we put the random phase, um, we're basically doing that so these, the oscillator doesn't randomly start on a a random position inside of the waveform. That way it always will start at, we'll say zero. All right, and these will both set, are set to start there. So we'll turn on the detune to about, let's say 0 0.09 is about right. We'll do it as well on oscillator B. Okay, that sounded pretty good. And that's really gonna add in some nice harmonics once we start to get into the fuller modulation of the sound. Uh, but next, we're going to turn on the sync in oscillator B. Leaving it at around 2.05. Um, as you can see, we're bringing in an extra copy of the waveform, which is essentially turning it up one octave, but there is a little bit left over, and that's creating that really nice harmonic sound. So we're just going to, from this point on, we're gonna turn it up two octaves. I know it sounds a little crazy right now. And we're actually going to modulate this. We'll modulate it up. And for the wavetail position, I left this on our standard stall tooth, um, but we're actually gonna be using, I don't, I'm actually not sure what the proper name for this one's called, um, but we'll leave it around right there. As you can hear, completely different sound from our sawtooth. It's a lot grittier and definitely um, heavier on the lower end. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin our modulation cycle or a process as we already just did with the sync. We're also going to do with the level. We're gonna be modulating that of oscillator A. So let's go ahead and turn down the level. Um, now one of the key things that we're gonna be doing here or for the reasoning behind this is I do modulate the level in a lot of my bases. Um, this one's actually so high end, you can almost call it a lead, but 
we'll need to do like a whole spectrum to in order to actually you know make that conclusion for sure not a huge deal um but just by modulating the level from zero all the way to 100 percent, or maybe even a little bit less than that so it doesn't clip is going to make it so crucial it's going to make it a lot more cleaner uh or a lot more cleaner is that even right grammar a lot cleaner um <laughs> So you can also do that with the filter, which we're actually going to be doing now, but we're not necessarily going to be making it sounding cleaner. We're going to be making it sound cooler with this filter. So let me show you what I mean. For the filter, we're going to be using the reverb, which can be found in the miscellaneous section and reverb. That is only if you have the most up-to-date serum. So if you guys are not up to date, either go to Expert Records website if you purchase serum. And if you didn't pur purchase serum, get off of this tutorial. Like, that's not cool, bro. Serum is an amazing synth. Alright, I'm gonna put the mode onto trigger. We'll put... Okay. That'll... We can uh, change the shape in a little bit, but... Um, for now, let's modulate the cutoff. We're gonna modulate the cutoff actually all the way up. So, if you guys aren't familiar with the reverb filter, basically it is kind of emulating reverb um, and the cutoff is almost like changing the size and if you guys have ever changed the size on reverb you'll notice that there is kind of a weird um, disposition in the pitch when you're when you're actually moving it around so and similar to that we're actually experiencing that in the cutoff as well um, so but the resonance is almost like the size for this one um, so anyways, we'll actually just turn the resonance down to zero and for the cutoff We're gonna leave it around here. I just previously did this But I don't want to give you guys a grip of what the reverb filter sounded like if you weren't too familiar um, But we'll also turn up the drive Time to turn it down a bit because it is clipping All right, so now that we do have our a base for the sound we can start to construct what we want our shape to look like so in the example that I provided, I did a little something like this. It is a... Uh, doesn't sound too good right now, but guys, trust me, stick with me. Once we get into the effects section, it is going to really clean up. And that starts right now. Into the effects section, we're gonna go into the filter. And here, we're just gonna type, not type, we're gonna select our notch Rooney, <laughs> our notch filter, which is right here. And we're just going to turn the cutoff up. All right, guys, let me just tell you a little story here. Back in my massive days, when massive was the shit, the notch filter was, I used to put this bad boy onto every single growl bass I did to make it sound like it was talking. Um, but you know, oh, how have the times changed? I hardly ever use this. Um, anyways, we're going to turn up the cutoff. Um, oh yeah, by the way, guys, you guys can't already hear, um, the notch filter is basically like an inverted peak filter. And essentially what it's doing is it's just has like this little V shape and it's cutting out um, at a very steep slope, certain frequencies, whatever, wherever we're modulating it, it's going to be cutting out those frequencies, um, just like that. And the resonance will actually make it, it'll make that peak even slimmer. So we want to leave it um, at around 0%. That way we kind of do have the full effect here. Um, so the cutoff, we're going to leave it around 2,341 hertz. And let's go ahead and turn the, modulate that down, turn up the drive. Oh, excuse me. Uh, now we'll get into the hyper slash dimension selection. Hyper, we'll just turn on mix, although it does really sound like one of those classic dubstep basses with it all the way up like that. Uh, dimension, we're going to turn down the size to about 1% and the mix to about 40%. And what that's going to do is that's going to enable us to... Um, to experience more stereo width without actually getting that shitty, <laughs> that shitty tail that we get when we turn that up too much. So we'll leave it around 1%, the mix at 26, actually 30 is about good. Our compressor, we're gonna turn on our multiband. 
picking up that gain. The voicing, uh, mono, legato, of course. That's as far as we have so far. We're obviously not quite there, but we are getting somewhere. Now into the delay. Oh yeah, if we turn up the, the filter past the uh, the initial cutoff, that actually does sound a little bit closer to what I had before. But anyways, back into the delay. Um, the feedback, we're going to turn up to about, let's say 43%, 44%. If you guys are probably like, Shane, what the hell are you doing with the delay? Guys, hear me out, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional, okay? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna turn the BPM sync off, and we're gonna turn on link. That way we can just move one of these and the other will move with it. We're not just gonna be, oh, uh, we're only moving one. That's just stupid. We wanna move both at the same time. So, um, because why would we have it in the left at one time and the right at different? I mean, sure, that could create a, a pretty cool effect, but number one, okay, this is a weird story. My leopard gecko, I'm, I'm sorry for, these, for the story, but my leopard gecko, I was chilling with him on my desk, right? He, he climbed inside of my freaking left speaker um, and then got like all inside of like the electrical equipment and stuff. I fucking had to take the thing apart and not the gecko, <laughs> the speaker, and then rip out all the insides of the speaker and then rescue my gecko. Okay. Um, I actually, when he was inside, he climbed in through the base port, the base reflex port. And my first thing, I'm like, okay, I got to figure out something out, how to, how to get him out of here. So I, I immediately started playing rhythm, hopefully that he'd be like, oh my gosh, why the hell am I in here? This is just so shitty. So, and he'd climb out, but I don't know, maybe it's into rhythm or something. So he climbed even further in. But anyways, long story short, had to get rid of my left speaker. Um, that not, that has nothing to do with this. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> into the delay. Um, sorry. When we do a short delay on this basis like this, it creates like a really cool robotic metallic effect. Um, we're gonna need to turn up the mix a little bit more to kind of hear that effect though. See what I mean? So it'll also kind of give us a cool little extra tail in the sound. Um, so finally, we're just gonna get into the EQ and we're going to turn our peak filter here. As I said before with the notch, that's literally a notch filter and the resonance is the Q factor. Excuse me. Um, and <laughs> anyways, we're going to just simply modulate this up. And then we're going to modulate the frequency. And that's going to give us kind of a talking sound. And that is literally all it took to make the space. Maybe you could, could even uh, put on some distortion. Yeah. And a quick little tip, you could even turn up the semitones to seven. Yeah, you could do some really cool sounds with this. So that should wrap, wrap up today's video. I can't speak for my life. Um, I actually can speak, I'm speaking right now. So ha, top that. Okay, that was a little weird. I don't even know where I'm going with this anymore. You guys know me, I'm Shane Gregoire. If you guys wanna follow me, follow me on Instagram, it's Shane Gregoire, at Shane, S-H-A-N-E, Gregoire, G-R-E-G-O-I-R-E, -E, no underscores or anything, it's just Shane Gregoire, S-H-A-N-E, G-R-E-G-O-I-R-E, -E. and today, we just learned how to make the sick FM bass, and that's it, guys. You already know what to do if you haven't already subscribed. We have the best serum tutorial, tutorial, tutorial channel on YouTube. And if you aren't already subscribed, it's not us that's missing out. It's you. So get your butt subscribed ASAP.